Okay, this talk's going to be a bit different to normal, and it's called the light clock hoax. And the videos I'll be referring to are uh, the light clock at that place, and the hoax machine at this place here, and the maths at this place here. So let's get to it. So this is the setup where you've got two mirrors basically here, one mirror down here, one mirror up here and you've got distance L light is emitted and goes up and gets bounced back down again this is when, when the whole setup is stationary so it's going that distance L and when it's moving the light is then going at an angle so the light is the mirror is here the mirror moves, the light bounces up to there and bounces down to there this is when it's moving, this is what you see that which is probably not too clear so hence why I'm going to have to show you the videos but basically that distance L is then that distance there when you're, when you're with this setup when it's stationary that's what you see just the light going up and down but when this whole thing moves it looks like the light is going at this zigzag angle so if we put some numbers in, or if we put the maths into it we've got the we say the dis speed of light is C speed of light is C there and C T prime we talk about so L is that there L equals C T prime so be that that's that distance and then this distance here is supposed to be CT if you got that so it's a time T for that one T, so that's CT and then it's Pythagoras theorem where you've got that is CT, that is VT and that is L and then from that you you form that by Pythagoras theorem you do your maths manipulation and you get T prime is equal to T times that expression and that, so you're saying that uh, is that right there yep so you're saying the time for the light to go up here is T prime the light for going that way is T and then you see you've got time dilation so say that T prime is different to that T that's how they get the time dilation equation so let's have a really I'll come back to this because it needs to you need to sh see what's going on this is the setup where they use the spaceships now so this is their little talk on light clock Einstein's big idea was that the amazing speed of light holds the key to everything from the untold power of the atom to the possibility of time travel to follow in the footsteps of his genius Imagine the great scientist in a rocket ship, floating in deep space. The ship has powerful headlights, and when Albert switches them on, the light races away from him at, of course, the speed of light, 670 million miles an hour. Now imagine that Albert has a twin brother, Bertrand, who also Einstein's. has a spaceship. Let's say Bertrand flies away from Albert at half the speed of light. When Albert turns on his headlights, how fast would they seem to be going when they overtake Bertrand? You'd think he would see them pass by relatively slowly, like a faster car passing you on the highway. But that's not the way light works. Instead, Bertrand would see Albert's high beams pass him at the full speed of light. Bertrand's own speed makes absolutely no difference these are all just claims that they come up with eventually they're going to get to the uh, diagram of the light clock where which they're going to divide the mass from it and then they're going to make up all these claims from that this prediction of Einstein that the speed of light is the same for everyone is one of the strangest in physics he's calling it a prediction but no it's normally taken to be a postulate or assumption or definition or something like that so he's totally misrepresenting it there 
one of the strangest in physics. But it's true. It's been shown by hundreds of experiments. The speed of light is going to be the same, no matter how fast you're moving towards it or away from it. Even if Bertrand turns around and travels head-on towards Albert, he would still see Albert's headlights pass him at the same speed. It's just all claims, really, and it's it's kind of circular thinking, really, when they're sort of like doing experiments. If they're doing it from the definition that light speed is constant, then it's just circular. So what's going on? Welcome to the realm of time travel. If both brothers see light moving at the same speed, then something else must be changing. That something is time. Yeah. So the consequence if you're defining light speed in a vacuum, inertial frame, free of fields, as a constant, then knock-on effect is you've got to change something like time to keep it that way. So time for both these people is going to be different because of that. Something has to give. Well, actually time, it's bad to call it time because it's really the clocks are going at different rates. I mean, it's, an, it's another problem. You think of, uh, if you think of clocks as measuring time, if you've got two clocks that are not measuring, going at the same rate, that's not really time going at a different rate, it's just the clock's going at a different rate. So you've got a problem between the actual device uh, uh, measuring time and time itself. It's really, really clocks going different, not really time. So The things that have to give are space and time. It turns out that if an object is moving fast enough through space, it can alter its passage through time. It's really, really the clocks, but they, we end, just end up. It's too much of work. It's time, time being different, but sort of like that is them major arguments. Is it time, or is it just the clocks? <laughs> If Bertrand's ship had some suitable equipment, we could see this mysterious effect for ourselves. This device is a light clock, two mirrors that face each other with a particle of light, or photon, bouncing between them. Now this, is, this is the light clock, and I'm just trying to point out, light goes up, hits the mirror up there, bounces back down again, and so forth. So if you're this person in a spaceship, it's moving with the light, light clock, and so they're just seeing the light bouncing up and down. Each bounce is one tick of the clock. And in the right hands, such a clock shows directly how speed changes time. And so they're back to saying speed changes time. Really, really, really should be clock rate, the rate that the clock goes. But enough of that. These ticks would normally occur millions of times per second. So, that, so it's, you're, station, you're stationary with respect to this light clock and the tick is just going up and down. But we have slowed it down to show how this clock works and how the motion of it will affect the rate of ticking. So when it's moving it's going that when, when the device is moving the light is is banks and then zigzags. So if you're stationary with respect to the light clock, that, uh, there. if you're stationary with respect to the light clock, then it just appears to be bouncing up and down. But but if you're watching the light clock, if you're a person standing here and the light clock is moving, then what you're seeing is the light moving at a zigzag. And this is what I was trying to point out here in this di these diagrams. So when you're stationary with respect to the light clock, it's just bouncing up at the light's just bouncing up and down. And when it's moving, you get in this zigzag. And what they do is they claim that that distance is c, the speed of light times t prime, t prime being the time. And they claim that here the distance is c times t and uh, see a speed of light and t 
is a different time. So they're claiming that time there is t and that time there is t prime. So they're claiming the time is different. And those times being different then mean you end up with a bit of maths which ends up as Pythagorean theorem there and after manipulation you get t prime is equal to t times that. So they're claiming that t prime there for the light to go up is different to that time there for the light to go from there to there. That's where they get in this time dilation thing from. So we go back to the uh, video of this. He's going to where he's going to do it. Be a bit more. So this is the light clock. We pick it up again. And that would be time to be up to there. T prime. And when it moves at that angle, it would be uh, T. Fact: the rate of ticking. So it's moving at an angle, and so that would be time. It's supposed to be taking time now, t, to get from the bottom to the top. You'll notice that the clock is ticking more slowly as I move it. And that's his claim. He's, he's claiming that's what's happening. Why is that? Well, the photon is making a zigzag path to reach one mirror and then the other. That's a longer path that the photon has to take. And that means that it takes more time to make that path. So the clock is slowing down. This is where physics and science fiction collide. Time for the moving clock runs slow. Although if you travel with it, like Bertrand, you're not aware of the change. That's because everything happening on board including your heartbeat and your brain waves, would slow down by the same amount. The faster Bertrand travels, the further the photon has to go between ticks, and the slower time passes for him. So what might be an hour for Bertrand could be a hundred years for the rest of us. In effect, he would be traveling a hundred years into the future. That's all claims. That's, that's all things they say, and... So we go back to that. Um, um, the time passes for him. So this clock here, for this person here, what he observes is just this uh, light, um, this light bouncing from here to here, straight up and down. But for a person who's observing this spaceship moving, he's watching the light move in a zigzag. So it's uh, when the mirror is here. Uh, it's going up but it's going at an angle and the mirror is moving then the top mirror moves moving and so it then moves up to zigzag and down again zigzags zigzags all the way as it shows so what might be an hour for Bertrand could be a hundred years for the rest of us yep all false claims really but here we go back to that diagram so that's this is the diagram it basically shows it light bouncing up and down and then if this whole thing moves, then you get in this zigzag pattern, zig up and zig down, and so forth. It keeps on keeps going on like that. So if this this whole thing is moving, it's velocity v. That's the velocity there, v. And if it takes time t, then it's t there. And then this distance along here would be c t. And so along here we say they say that time is c. Is, they say the distance is c. T prime. So this, they're claiming there's a different time up and down to what's going from here to here. And from that they're getting the time dilation equations, I say, and they go through the maths. Okay. Pythagorean theorem, and they're getting all this. So it's simple as that. So let's now look at this. This is going to take some getting through. Hoax machine. See what's going on here.
basically repeating that. Let's do it again. So, I'll go back. So, ignore that for a moment. If uh, if this was stationary with respect to you, if you were moving with this light clock, there would be light because it's going up and down, up and down, up and down. So that's light within the light clock. Up and down, up and down. So, and this is light. This is the light coming from outside, and it's coming in from outside, it's hitting there, and bouncing up. Well, it's actually, this is moving, so it's bouncing up. It's looking like it's going at an angle. So, try and pick it up again. So that is bounce, bounce. Is if that is bouncing, it's bouncing up and down, but. In, in respect to one frame that's moving it down. So we go back to it. Consider for a moment that as this is moving, light is bouncing up and down like this. And this, this light from outside is doing different. Up and down, 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 up and down. Up and down, up and down. Up and down, up and down. And this light's coming from it. up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. So, so go back again. Light inside the light clock is just going up and down, up and down, up and down, relative to the person moving with this light clock. And this light is going different. This is light from outside. So what you've got from that is this same diagram. What you basically got is when you're moving with the when you're stationary with respect to when, you, when you're stationary with respect to the light clock, it's just moving up and down, up and down, up and down. That's what you got up and down, up and down, straight for vertical, and the light from the outside as uh, light from the outside which we've got the mirrors moving, you then got the light going like that, bounce and bounce. And then it's the mirror's not gonna be there. So it just bolts out. So that's what you've got there. I'll try to show you it again. Light inside the light clock going up and down, up and down, up and down. Light from the outside coming through and bouncing it at a funny angle. Up and down, 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 down. That's light in the light clock. Up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And this this one bouncing through. So you've got two two paths of light there. So we go back to it. So now what they like to consider is from that frame. That's the light always inside the clock. And then what the other light was the uh, light which is from the outside and it's going like that so you combined it you've got light inside which is permanently trapped within the light clock and then you've got light coming in from outside so you've got two different beams of light now within that setup and that's so you've combined everything into one clock so you've got light going that way and you've got light going up that way now and so whereas before it would be just that one beam of light and that, and that one beam of light when it moves would appear like that okay so I hope that's clear it is a bit difficult you've, you've got two beams of light with this I'm talking about two beams of light with this light clock you've got light bouncing up and down up and down up and down and that's light trapped within the light clock and this light coming in is light from the outside. So when you're moving with this frame, all you're seeing is the light bouncing up and down, up and down. That's the light trapped within the light clock. 
but this light from outside what you're seeing with that would be that it's traveling at an angle here we go again. this is at an angle when you're moving with long that so there you go you have now combined two beams of light you've got one beam of light at CT another beam of light at CT prime so they're claiming two different times for the light the outside light is they're claiming that's speed C and they're claiming the light within the clock is speed C and but they now so they, now they've got one clock with the time T and with the time T prime and that's nonsense that light is going at a different speed to that speed you can't have a clock go giving two different times it's just nonsense they're trying to combine that time as T and that time as T prime as two different times that, that light goes from there to there in time T and that light goes from there to there in time T prime then that speed should be different to that speed of the light so they, they're claiming that C and that C and that's wrong so I don't know if that's clear enough so I'll go back to the hoax machine that's light from outside light from outside as you're moving it's bouncing up and in a zigzag as observed for you moving with the clock but you have another beam of light and it's just moving up and down and so you've got the light going at different speeds you've got light going at different speeds you haven't got different times it's, it's not different times you can't say that that is a, taking a different time to go up and down to this this one going just going up and down we go back again trying to claim that is time t t prime and that is time t that's nonsense what you really got is that it's a different speed to that speed so the assumption that light speed is constant is false and all you're doing is messing up your maths when you when you're assuming light speed is constant you are coming up with that maths where you've got t prime as different to t where t prime is equal to t times that factor and you shouldn't be doing that you're only getting that because you're making the mistake of assuming that speed is the same as that speed but it can't be right you can, what you're doing then is you are messing up a clock you've got that time that's different to that time which is nonsense they're both the same time the clock can't have two different times so that's quite hard to comprehend I think that is the illusion you can't have a clock with two times you can't have a clock where that time for the light to go from there to there is different to the, to the light to go from there to there there are different speeds going on here that's what's being highlighted here but the speed the speed of the light that light there from the outside the speed of the light from the outside is a different speed to the speed of the light which is trapped within the light clock so that is basically it I hope I made that clear so we got all this stuff about oh it's time travel it's all time travel but you combine we go back to this that the photon has to take yeah but as you're moving <coughs> but that's as you're moving so they got the person there from the outside observing that and seeing that but you could also have another light beam going from here to here which is not going that way so those both times should be the same 
but they try and pretend they're different times. So it's completely a hoax. It's just complete hoax with the maths.